Kim Mulkey. Yeah, we've got Kim Mulkey right here. Oh the the <laughs> Hey, what is this one like compared to the other ones that you experienced with Kramer? Well, Kramer's emotional right now because he didn't get to experience that natty. He was so close, but he's so happy. He's actually in Baton Rouge waiting for me to get home to celebrate. What is it about second-year coaches at LSU? We just happened to end the year with a national title. It's not about coaches, baby. It's about those players. It's about the players. Couldn't have said it any better. Kim Mulkey, the legend. All right, let's continue to make our way through this pandemonium. We've got Paul. Gonna see if we can. Paul. Paul. Dude, I can't right now. I'm sorry. You can't give me something. I can't. How does do this anything. feel? You got to give me something. It feels amazing, but <laughs> that's all I got, brother. <laughs> the best player in college baseball is speechless right I'm now. Speechless. This is what you came to LSU for, though. Yes, sir. What is this? Does this compare to what you thought it would feel like? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, man. What has been this run like for you since stepping down on Omaha soil and right now ending it in Omaha soil? As good as it can be. This, is, is, this is awesome. <laughs> Never have I seen this man so short of words whatsoever. Nice job. <laughs> oh, man. I'm and let's get let's get Ty Floyd, who set that fantastic record in Game One of this Florida series. How does this feel for you right now? It's insane. It's <laughs> there's only so many words you could put this in. The, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is the best feeling I think I've ever felt in my life. I mean, all, what we tried to accomplish here this year, and, and now that we actually done it, it's it's unreal. Walk me through this pitching staff. The middle of the year, the bullpen was left for dead. We get here now. It's the strength of this team. It led this team to a national title. It's first since 2009. What does that say about the resilience of this pitching staff? This, this pitching staff, it's it's insane. Coach Jay told us early in the year, he told us, he's like, hitting, yes, is cool, but pitching is what wins national championships. You have to have depth. And the way our staff came in this week and came up clutch and pitched their tails off for us, it's, it's insane. It's like it just they carried us. I mean, from top to the bottom, everybody pitched this weekend. It was insane. Look, some can say you carried us. You know, the beginning of this championship series with Florida, a college World Series record with 17 strikeouts. What does it feel like for you as Jay Johnson, your coach, gets the Gatorade bath right behind us? But what does it say to you to kind of kickstart this thing from the very beginning? I mean, what Coach Jay told us at the beginning of the year is like pitch to pitch, and that's all I kept telling myself was pitch to pitch. It's just going myself pitch to pitch and allow my my offense behind me to come up and just get hits. I knew they were going to do that. I mean, shoot, I had to face them all fall and stuff. I knew they could hit stuff, so I know there's no other team in the country that can face that, that's for sure. Does it feel as good now as you thought it would feel when this journey started back in the fall? It feels even better. <laughs> this 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 feeling is insane. I, I'm I'm lost for words right now. <laughs> we just talked to Paul Skeens. He was kind of of that similar mindset. Had very little to say. Was lost for words. Talk to what that guy means to this team. I think he means everything. I mean, he's carried us all year. He's done amazing things. He's gonna have a long, long career in, in pro baseball. He's about to get paid a lot of money and stuff. He's he's done a ma immaculate thing for this year, from the top to the bottom, from the beginning of the year to late in the year. He's done, it's, it's insane how well he's done for us. Hey, how about this guy right here? Only so many words you can put in the words for him. It's my brother right here. He's been great all year for us. He came in today, he came in with that clutch first hit of the game. I mean, that's what kickstarted. That inning right there is what really got us going. And I think that's the biggest thing is allowing all of our offense to go in that, that second inning. That's what got us going. Jordan, I'm going to ask you the same question. Thanks, Ty. It's Thanks, been a roller coaster of emotions for this entire program, but we can point to you especially. How does this feel right now compared to your journey, your peaks and valleys? An unexplainable feeling, man. I, I just I don't even know how to describe it. You know, we've been through a lot as a team for the past three years, a lot of us guys, and uh, I couldn't be prouder of the way that we've battled adversity all year long, guys going down, guys stepping up, you know, just coming out here and having fun every single day and trying to, you know, keep winning. You know, we didn't we didn't want to stop playing with each other, and, you know, it was all worth it for sure. What did you do after yesterday, after the two errors, after everybody in the fan base, some were down on you? What did you do? How did you flip the switch to today? Yeah, I mean, 
excuse my language, but yesterday don't mean shit, and that's kind of how we how we go about things. Right when the game was over, it was like, all right, flip the script. I mean, yesterday had nothing to do with today, and we came out here and we competed our asses off, and you know we came out champions. So, I mean, that's just kind of how we've been all year. You know, we don't let things get us down. It don't matter, you know, what's going on, and uh, we're just gonna come out here every day. You know, and that's the great thing about baseball. You know, the next day is a new day. You know, you can't worry about yesterday. Today it has no effect on the game. So I'm just so proud of our guys and the way that we battled. Look, con compared to a lot of guys on this team, you're a young pup, right? You've got guys like Travinsky, Dugas, Melosa, who have been around the block a couple times. What does this title mean for guys like that that have shared in the highs and lows of this program? Everything. Everything. I mean, this is why they came back, and this is why, you know, we worked so hard, you know, not even just from the fall this year, but even last year, a lot of those guys set the foundation for, you know, this team and what we are. So I can't speak, you know, higher about those guys. I mean, they're the reason that, that we're here, and they're the reason guys like me, Dylan, and Trey, Braden, and stuff like that are able to come out here every single day and, you know, be able to give it our all. You know, we always turn to those guys and, uh, you know, they, they've done it for us, not just all year, but, you know, the whole time that we've been here. You know, I just... I'm so proud of my guys. Oh, my God. In, in two years, you're a national championship, on, on a champion under Jay Johnson. Be honest with me. What has he done for this program? Everything. I mean, from from the bottom to the top. I mean, he's he's really made us uh, who we are. And you know, we don't we don't give in. You know, we come out here every single day and we treat it like it's a playoff game. And I think that's a big reason why we were able to uh, you know come out here and, and do the things that we did, or lose the game and be able to come back and win the next couple. So, I mean, just that type of thing. You know, keeping guys locked in, mentally right, and stuff like that. I mean, he, he's the best. You know, you can't speak higher about him. And uh, I'm so I'm so grateful that he's been my coach for the past two years. Well done, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. so many times you want to win a national championship more than you want to breathe <laughs> well you're breathing now yeah how does it feel now breathing well i hope that doesn't mean I, i'm okay to die now <laughs> you know? uh, no um, it feels great yeah it just this was supposed to happen and I, and I know how hard it is and and so just because you have this great team with great talent to watch them become a collection of talent that became a team and there's so many positive contributions from everybody. Like, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's, it's Paul, it's Dylan, obviously. Trey, obviously. But, I mean, there's guys that, Jared Jones, like, I mean, we wouldn't be here. And then, you know, we kind of went with a different direction. And, you know, Josh Pearson steps up and, and goes crazy. Gavin Gidry, we didn't even have him throw a bullpen until January. And he closes out the ninth inning of the College World Series. I believe we have four major league pitchers that are hurt right now. When that happens, you don't win a national championship. And we just won a national championship. When you took over two years ago, the picture in your mind, the plan that you had for this program, Obviously, national championship is the goal, but does it look, has it gone exactly the way you've laid it out in your mind? There is zero arrogance when I say this. Zero. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. In what way? I, again, I know it's very simplistic, but like this was the place, and I probably would have came here anyways, but looking at the team that was in place, I legitimately thought our staff could help them do this and that we could find a blueprint in recruiting and developing players, the program that could get us back here. And I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. In your mind, what have you done to this LSU program? What have you done with this program moving forward? What's now the standard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we have a four-week delay, I guess, in, in recruiting. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I think uh, the best recruiting we could possibly do took place on this field over the last two weeks. You know, when you look at the development stories, you're going to have the number one and number two pick in the draft, and I'm so proud of those guys for that. You got guys like Nate Ackenhausen, JC guy, comes out here and beats, you know, one of the three best teams in the country, in my opinion. That's what makes this remarkable, too. We played the best team along the way every step of the NCAA tournament that we could play with Oregon State and then Kentucky in the Super Regional. And then Tennessee, I mean, legit. And then Wake, and then Florida. I mean, to, to win six SEC games in the NCAA tournament is, is remarkable. How happy are you for Jordan Thompson? Yeah, I love him. I'm never going to have a son, probably, so he's as close as there is to it. And, uh, yeah, 
That's a big time gratitude gratitude moment right now. Look, he's only been here one year, but what kind of mark did Paul Skeens leave on this program? You can't quantify it. I mean, uh, the performance is the performance. It didn't only impact the games he pitched, it impacted the rest of the weekend, the rest of the week. But he is the unquestioned leader of this team. And uh, to do that when you only were here for 11 months, it's pretty special. Same question for Dylan Cruz. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he's one of the reasons I came here. And, um, you know, I know that may sound crazy about one player, but that's how impactful he was. I mean, four hits tonight in the championship game. I mean, the 430 or whatever he hit. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't do it any better than he just did it for 70, 71 games. You can't do it any better. Was the plan for him to go in today at any point? Well, I'm talking about Paul Yeah, Keith. it was... So we, I mean, uh, people think I'm being like uh, secretive and all this, but we actually do a bunch of testing on their body, not just the arm, but like, is it, are his hips right? Is his core right? Are his legs right? And he tested good, but I was only comfortable with about 30 pitches was the max, which is why we didn't start him. We didn't want to do it at the beginning of the game. And, that, and they see him walk off the mound. And I thought that would give Florida an emotional lift. And I really trusted Thatcher. You know, I felt like Ty stuff the other night at the time that he threw was the same exact time. I thought that would play at that time. And I'm so proud of him. Lankford is a dude. Like, the top three picks in the draft were on this field tonight. So, I mean, Homer, but then he, he dominated the rest of the game. They didn't do anything the rest of the game. So, unbelievable job by Thatcher. Riley gave us everything we can. I mean, he's puking in the hotel for two days. He's a winner. I mean, I, Aaron might know, but that's like seven or eight appearances here. I mean, guy's a legend. Um, if he wasn't on the all-tournament team, that's a travesty. Um, you know, and then Gavin, just he's, he's got this and he's got that. And, uh, you know, he'll be a reason that we make it back here in the next couple of years. Thank you. <laughs> are still moving. Hey, we've got to get Wes Johnson here because he said he promised us he would talk on a microphone before the week's in. Here's your chance. What does this feel like for you? This is incredible. I mean, the work that Jay and I put in, you know, helping to put the team together and then and then, you know, just practicing and getting it, putting it together on a very fast track, uh, working together for only a year and then getting these guys where they needed to be, watching them grow. It, it, I can't put words into it, man. When you came here this fall, I know you're not a guy to pat yourself on the back, but some of these pitchers have made tremendous jumps, are going to be drafted very high because of your tutelage. Talk about the work that this pitching staff has put in from the fall and especially towards the end of the year that's carried this team to a national title. Yeah, you know, one of the things I told him is when we when we got when we made that regional, I, I just told him I said, guys, look, there's a lot of teams that'll quit working right now. They're they're happy to get in the regional. They're going to just show up. I said, we have to try to find a way to get better every single day, even now until we're done playing, until the last out is made. And to those guys' credit, they did it. We pu I pushed them every day. They kept working. Even when we got here, even today, they're like, hey, whoa, we gotta we gotta go through our stuff, coach. I said, guys, it's the last one. They go, no, no, we gotta go. And so they did it, and we went through our whole routine today. That's a credit to them. You've coached in the big leagues a long time. You've seen a lot of good arms. Where does Paul Skeens rank in guys that you've seen, coached, worked with, whatever? Yeah. Where is he? Yeah, I mean, at the collegiate level, I don't know that I'll ever coach another one like him. You know, it's a once in a generation, once in a coaching career uh, opportunity. He's going to be a, he's going to be a really good big leaguer um, when he gets up there. And he's going to have a lot of success, and he'll rank up there with one of the best I've ever been around. Why was this pitching staff able to bounce back in the second half of the season when everybody thought that they were left for dead with this bullpen? Why were these guys able to turn in performances, especially in Omaha, on short rest, resilience, all of it? You know, sometimes you want it to happen faster than it does. Um, and Jay and I were pushing it and really trying to get it to happen as fast as we could. And it just wouldn't click right at first. Um, and then once we got them into that routine and figured out their recovery and figure out how to handle them in the weight room, you started to see it. You slowly started to see it. And we had a hiccup at the end of the regular season. And then, boy, in the regional, it just hit and kept going. Where does this season rank in your career? Oh, yeah, it's, it's the best season ever. <laughs> Come on, man. We just won national time. Hey, but no, it's the best I've ever had. It, it's been phenomenal. It's been awesome. And thank you all for y'all's support and coverage of us. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> hey, let's go. Riley. Oh, Riley oh, yeah. Cooper. 
<laughs> we were told you were throwing up in the hotel for the past two days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. You're smiling now. Yeah. It, it was a little bit of crying probably last. Yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> what is it about? That, I think, is a metaphor, right, for this pitching staff, able to come back, bounce through whatever. Why were you guys, why were you specifically able to do that to the highest level here in Omaha? I think just playing for each other because we're all so close, and I knew we had the potential the whole year to be like that, and, yeah, just good to see it all come together. What was the vibe around this staff? You know, during the middle of the season, things weren't going great with the bullpen. You're giving up a lot of runs. It wasn't the best performance. What was the message? What was the, the vibes around that bullpen? I mean, it was still good. We just uh, knew to keep pushing on and because we knew we had the talent there. And so, yeah, we just kept going, and it ended up working out. Talk to me about Wes Johnson, what he's done with really any, everybody on this pitching staff from the time that he stepped here in the fall till now. He's just so personable, so I feel like we can all go to him for questions and not feel afraid to ask questions or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, he was able to work with all of us, and just, yeah, we're all really close to him. They told me you got some more innings left tonight. I think you're going <laughs> to, they said you're going to throw a late night bullpen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. <laughs> hey, where does this rank in your career? You know, I know you've been with Jay a lot. You came with him over from Arizona, and now you've won a national title. What does this feel like for you with him? I mean, definitely the best feeling. I mean, this is the, t- the best we could have done, so. Yeah, just the best. Do we really know how much work this team has put in? I don't think so. <laughs> we really worked out this uh, year. How hard was it? The fall is pretty tough. <laughs> the fall is tough. <laughs> Riley Cooper, thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right, that was Riley Cooper. I feel like he's probably going to pitch every single game. Timeout. Oh, we've got to get... This is Alex Malazzo. Fractured that shin in the middle of that game. We're going to get to him in a little bit, but right now he's got just as many national titles as he does legs in that walking boot. Sent home on a play, base hit to the outfield and fractured that ankle. Apparently it's not going to need any surgery, but he is going to be probably uh, another really, really good catcher at the professional level. Still making our way through Charles Schwab Field. Trying to find somebody to talk to, and here's the Scott Woodward. the man, the myth, the legend, Scott Woodward. He'd been there a number of times and had done it, and it was just, you know, I knew he'd get there in a hurry. This is a program that expects to win national championships every year, even though that's unrealistic. Sure. What does it feel like, though, to kind of get, have that release for the first time in 14 years? It's just great, and so I'm so happy for him to win his first one and the way we did it. And you know, as I was telling uh, someone earlier, I'm so happy for these kids to be part of something special. You know, they embraced the pressure, they embraced the expectations, and did what they were supposed to do. And uh, when that happens, it's magical. Scott, when you interviewed Jay Johnson many moons ago, yeah. when he interviewed, was the plan then as clear as it is now? Yeah, it is. And I was just reminiscing about it. It wasn't many moons ago. It was only two years, and it was here in Omaha when we did it. And uh, I knew he was going to do special things. Uh, this fast, not so sure. What is it about LSU second-year coaches? They end, they're ending their year with a national title. What is it? I just don't know. I, I, I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you. But it's, it's the place, and it's so special. And, you know, I think about every time I come here what Skip Burtman built for this program and how he laid uh, the groundwork and, and we stand on his shoulders and, and other coaches and, and players that have done this so many times here. And these kids have a lot to uh, to thank uh, in those guys and what they've done to get them to this point. But this, this team is special and I'm so happy for them. Skip Burtman was honored here at Charles Schwab Field. Maneri was walking around and now Jay's adding another national title. What does it mean for have all that, that great this year, especially in this moment. Yeah, it's great. And like I said, you know, I'm happy for them, but I'm even more happy for these kids, you know, to be have be part of this and having this for the rest of their lives, and it's special. So all the pressure's on Brian Kelly now for a <laughs> national championship in year two? Always, and always coaches love expectations. You know, you, you saw Coach Mulkey here tonight. She embraces it. Coach Johnson embraces it, and Coach Kelly does, and all of our coaches do, and that's what it's about. Awesome. Scott, thank you, buddy. Thank you. This is all I've ever wanted as a kid. Uh, this has been a, a goal, a dream of mine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it means everything to me. It's Baton Rouge. You know, I'm from Baton Rouge, so it just means everything to me. And 
you know, why, I remember as a kid watching that 2017 team and, uh, you know, thought I was on the field when they lost, so miss for them as well. Yeah, I know you talked to me earlier in the week about being from Baton Rouge, how much of a dream this is to play for LSU. What does it mean to you to bring another national championship back to LSU? It means everything to me. Uh, you know, wearing Tigers across my chest is uh, – it's not a have to, it's a get to, you know. Uh, I get to, I get to go to Alex Box Stadium every day and play in front of the greatest fans in the country, you know. Uh, it just means everything to me. You know, it's tough to put into words. What's it like to watch this performance, obviously 8-4, after the night you guys had last night to come out and dominate the way you guys did? Yeah, we're competitors. Uh, this whole team, we're full of competitors and winners. Uh, there was no plan B when we came out today. There was no losing. Uh, it was only tears of uh, happiness, you know, from dogpiling and winning it. And uh, just to have all that hard work and long hours pay off like this, it, it's awesome. When you walked across the stage earlier, the crowd just roared when you're doing yeah. What was that like in that moment? Everything I dreamed of. Everything I'd hoped it to be, you know. Uh, I've, give, I've, I've given LSU everything in me, and... Uh, you know, and they've given me everything. Uh, so, yeah, this is this is incredible. Alex, thank you. Congratulations. Thank are, you. Are you in too much pain to celebrate tonight? No, I'll be celebrating. <laughs> I, I think a little celebration to help a leg. How's I, the leg? Uh, it's broken. I broke my fibula. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just tell us, outside of that injury, what's tonight like? I know this has been a dream of yours since growing up in Zachary. Yeah. What does tonight feel like? And is it everything, maybe more, that you hoped of? Man, it's everything and some. Uh, to be able to do it at this university with this team, with these fans and the you know crowd, uh, means everything to me, man. That that Tigers across my chest means literally everything to me. I remember going to games as a kid, uh, you know, it, dreaming of it. You know, I laid in bed last night and I almost started getting sad because. I knew this would probably be the last. This was the last game, and uh, there was no, <laughs> there, there was no plan B. And it's because of guys like this one right here, Hayden Dravinsky. <laughs> We're brothers, man. Uh, a lot of these guys be my wedding. Um, I hope to be in theirs, man. And if Hayden ever gets married, but uh, yeah, this 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 is awesome. Look, you could have easily just packed it in in your last year, right? Yeah. You, had to sit for a little bit and then when you did come in it was only just bunting for like a month right yeah. how and why did you stay so resilient yeah you know me and my parents had uh, had a saying throughout the season and it's control what you can control uh, I, I don't write my name in the lineup uh, you know I don't I'm not I don't put myself out on the field so you control what you control and that's being a good teammate being the hardest worker at the field and uh, pulling for those guys, you know, being on time. And uh, another thing for me is, uh, I mean, not to put it on anybody, but I'm a Christian. And uh, a long time ago, earlier in the season, I told God I'd be following his plan. And wherever it led, I'd be all right with it. And uh, I blindly followed his plan, and he led me here. You've had probably the best view of all of these pitchers this entire season. Yeah. Even though he's been here for just one year, what has Paul Skeens done, and what has he meant to LSU? Everything, man. He that a guy like that's that's a game changer right there. Not only as yeah his abilities on the field, but as a teammate, um, he pushed those pitchers every day. And you know, it, a lot of credit to him and Wes Johnson for what they did to that pitching staff. Uh, he, he's been a leader for him. He's been a leader to this team. And uh, I mean, most importantly, he's a Tiger for life. What does the future for LSU look like right now? Oh, I think uh, this is going to be a staple for LSU, Alex Box North.